you found the Sega Holic. This is episode 72 How to Make an Xbox USB Adapter. Typically, when soft modding an Xbox, soft mod files are transferred from a USB stick to the Xbox's hard drive. So, obviously, a way is needed to connect the USB stick to the Xbox. That's where these Xbox USB adapters come in. If you prefer or don't have the tools to make one, you can find them on AliExpress for less than $2 with free shipping. Here's a wireless receiver that I don't have the controller for and luckily saved and an Xbox S controller. I got both years back from a swap meet. Both are modded with an added female USB adapter. For the USB stick, instead of going through the headache of finding a compatible memory device, just get the readily available 4GB SanDisk Cruiser Blade memory stick. It can be had for under $6 from AliExpress. The last thing needed for the Xbox soft mod is a compatible game disc, which I'll cover in detail in the next video. You can hack any Xbox peripheral that plugs into the controller port. I'm going to use this Xbox DVD movie playback kit. Luckily, the controller ports are based on USB, but with an added video sync pin. This pin is not used for making the USB adapter. A USB adapter cannot be piggybacked on the header pins that connect the board to the male Xbox plug, so the board must be removed. I already cut out the notch for the female USB-A port and cleaning the surface with isopropyl alcohol ensures a good bond with the hot glue that's going to be used. Now to identify what the pins are on the male Xbox plug. The easiest and surest way to find out is to find out which pin is the ground pin. A closer look reveals the outer slotted pins on a plug's metal sleeve that connects to case ground. With that known, obviously the slotted through holes on a board are ground. Now we can do a continuity test to find out which of these five regular through holes is ground. Now that we know what pin ground is, the chart is used to identify the other pins. Honestly, of the five pins, only one of the outer pins could be ground. And from there, the ground pin is used as orientation as the other pins are always in order. Again, once you find the ground pin, the pin next to it will be the unused video sync pin, then the data plus pin, and then the data minus pin next to it. And then on the other end, the last pin will be plus 5 volts. Same thing for the female USB-A port. Just identify ground to orient the pins.
Free thinning the pins makes soldering a lot easier. I first solder on the ground pin, for which I use a different color than the rest of the pins since I don't have all the colors of wires. Remember to skip the pin next to ground. If the wires are soldered on properly, it should survive a slight tug. Pre-thinning the pins makes soldering a lot easier. First, solder ground, remembering its location. Then you shouldn't have problems wiring the rest of the wires. Use some hot glue to close up the case, and it's done. Before I test the modded DVD playback kit, I'm going to mod this S controller I got for a great price. Though it's missing a breakaway cable, and the thumbsticks are messed up. To open up the controller, remove the screw underneath the serial number sticker and the rest of the six screws. Once the back cover is off, remove the memory card slot. Next, remove the connectors of the vibration motors from the PCB. With the PCB removed, now would be a good time to wash the finger crud from the parts of the controller. For cleaning, I just use Dawn dishwashing liquid and water. Off camera, I soldered 3 inch long 30 gauge wire to the female USB connector. Again, using different colored wire for ground for easy identification. Double sided tape is used to attach the USB connector to the inside of the memory card slot. But first, I'm going to put marks at increasing distances from the ends of the wire so I can easily ID them. I twisted the wires together to ease getting them through one of the side holes. Then I used the USB stick to help place the USB connector, being sure not to position the connector too far into the slot. The memory card slots can now be put back on to the PCB. A quick and easy way to find ground on the expansion slot is to look for the bigger gap between pins. It corresponds to this separation here on a diagram. Turning the controller 180 degrees orients the expansion slot to the diagram. Pre-thinning the pins makes soldering a lot easier. Now for a reassembly of the controller. I found some replacement thumbsticks on AliExpress for cheap. Though they don't have the reinforcements underneath, they seem to feel okay.
you can get a replacement breakaway cable for less than $2 on AliExpress. Okay, now to see if the hard work paid off and see if the controller and DVD playback kit test out okay. Now for the moment of truth. If the memory stick is compatible and the USB adapter is wired correctly, you should see this screen indicating that the memory unit inserted isn't working correctly and has been erased. Okay, alright, everything's working as it should. With the USB adapters made, join me next time when I wrap up this Xbox series with the installation of the SID soft mod. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Also, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Keep on gaming and aloha.